everybody, it's me, Sasha, Makeup Bliss. For a good reason. Today I'm gonna be talking about books while doing my makeup. I really love the concept of talking about books while doing something that a lot of us do every single day, apply makeup. And I am not saying that I'm a beauty guru and can't do makeup properly. No, no, no. I take a lot of shortcuts and those shortcuts work for me. You can copy what I'm doing. I'm just not saying that it's the correct way of doing it. It's the Sasha way of doing it. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So I'm gonna start off with doing my makeup and in between me doing my makeup I'm gonna talk about one of the few books that I have right by my side that I recently acquired and I'm super excited about some of them are writing books some of them are fictional books and I think it's a nice little jumbled up mess of novels that I think you guys will like because they're a unique selection okay so my face is bare right now I don't know how good it looks in the camera right now because the camera's kind of far away so I'm sorry if it gets unfocused now and then but my face took a beating in the past you know couple years because I had very bad acne when I was a freshman in college I always struggle with acne I still struggle with it till this day but it was really bad when I was a freshman and I'll insert a few photos right here and there it's not the worst it could have been it was just bad for me because that's the worst my acne has ever gotten it was cystic it hurt and it left some scarring so you know my face is not pristine and perfect but I think that's fine I don't think that acne scarring and skin damage is something to hide from a lot of people have it and it's just normal. People have perfect skin are very far and few between. Most of us have some flaws and flaws are what make you unique. So yeah, just wanted to say that. Right now my skin's pretty good. I don't have too many um, issues with it, but I always have blackheads. So that's why it's really nice to go in with my professional primer because it goes in, closes up pretty much all the pores. And by pretty much all of them, I mean only some because wow, my pores are large. But before I do that, I'm gonna start off with my ultra repair cream that I got from First Aid Beauty at Sephora. I live and breathe by this moisturizer. I have really dry skin, and when my skin isn't dry, it's really oily, but this really helps balance it out. I've been using it for years, and pretty much all the products I have for you guys today are products that I live and breathe by. I recommend all of them. I've been using them for years. I don't change up my beauty regimen that often, unless it has to do with, you know, like, washing my skin and taking care of it. That stuff I change up every few months. But with my makeup, I pretty much keep that the same, because when I find something I like, I tend to use it until it gets discontinued. But before I get into any of this, I forgot. I should probably put up my hair because don't want no makeup getting in there. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna go and crimp my hair with my crimper that I love very much. Ooh, am I sweating? I don't know. But if I am, this shirt is great for showing sweat. Okay, so hair is pulled back, moisturizer is ready. I'm not even sure if you put moisturizer on before you put primer on, but I'm gonna do it. I don't put primer on every day. Um, I put moisturizer on every day morning and night just because it really helps your skin some people think that moisturizer makes it more oily but that is not the case do use it you'll thank yourself when you're older by the looks of my father i think i'll have good skin when i'm older um like you know older old old person old but i could have had the oddity there and get real bad skin but my sisters have pretty good skin too and they're like in their late 40s 50s so Fingers crossed. But no matter what, I'm gonna still moisturize. Next, I'm gonna go in with my professional primer. I usually put it in my T-zone because that's where like most of my like pores are. I have like really bad blackheads on my nose. Like I've always had it, my dad has it, um, my sister has it, you know, we all have the blackheads. And I wish I had a cure for blackheads, but honestly, they just don't go away. They just wanna chill out on my face. And at this point, I started naming them. There's Billy, there's Joe, there's Patrice, there's Petunia, there's Larry. I'm just kidding, I didn't name them all. If I did, there would be lots of names on my face. Okay, so I'm just rubbing it in. Great. Next, I go in with my NARS concealer and I conceal all my trouble spots. I actually do not use foundation. I think I've only owned one foundation in all of the years that I've actually been doing my makeup and I think I still have a full bottle of it. I don't like the feeling of foundation on my face. I feel like it just clogs my pores up. Uh, for some people, foundation can be troublesome. I'm one of those people. They clog up my pores and just make little new blackheads sprout. For some people though, it doesn't do anything to their face. It just makes it look smoother and their face is fine. My face hates it. So I tend to just stick with what I know works for it and that is this, um, NARS concealer. I use it in the shade of vanilla and I've been using this thing for I think like a good like three years. Like I love it so much and I know a lot of beauty people use it on YouTube and obviously it's good. Okay so the first book I'm gonna be talking about 
in this video while I'm getting my face did did up with concealer is this writing book that I truly love. I had it in college when I was a freshman and I forgot all about it until recently when I was like, hey, you know what? I wish I had this book right now when I was writing. And it's called The Emotion Thesaurus. This book is amazing. It really helps you describe emotions um, when you are writing either dialogue or descriptions and it helps break them down. So you're not stuck thinking, have I been using this description? too much. Is this emotion overused in my book? Is an emotion underused in my book? So this it really really helps with those issues. Like for example, the top of the page says shame and it gives you a bunch of physical signals that could mean shame like cheeks that burn, crumpling onto a chair or sofa, pulling arms and legs in towards the core, then they have um, internal sensations, weak knees, thickness in throat, heat and tingling in face, then they have mental response, flight, reaction, pulling away from friends and loved ones, and they have cues of acute or long-term shame, depression, substance abuse, eating disorders, increased sexual activity, panic attacks, and there are just so many helpful things in this book that can help you expand on your use of emotions in writing a book. I really love the book and I um, I forgot what the title was so I actually went out to Twitter the other day and asked you guys to recommend books that are similar to this one because I knew what it was kind of about but I forgot what the title was because I threw um, my other copy away and throw away ads and I donated it um, after my first year of college. So I didn't have it anymore. I don't know why I ever donated it. I think it was like in a box that I didn't look through thoroughly enough and I just sent it off to up to the donation bin. But it's fine because I have a new one and it's like 10 to 12 dollars I think on Amazon. It's really helpful and I really love it. Right now I'm working on um, the second book in the Zenith duology and then after that I'm working on my solo project, Project Red. And oh my gosh, this is gonna come in handy when writing emotions. Like guys, when you read these next books of mine, you're gonna be like, wow, that thesaurus helped. Okay, so now I'm just rubbing in this concealer. I use my fingers. Don't judge me. When I use like, I use this like little brush that I I got it from NARS and when I mean I got it from NARS my mom did so it's like this thing is over five years old I'm not sure how long you're supposed to keep brushes around but this is not going anywhere unless I lose it but I usually use it to rub in the spots on my forehead and cheeks and whatnot but when I like go and rub in the concealer on my eyes I usually just do it with my fingers guys I told you I'm not very not very makeup savvy Tasha is probably cringing if she's watching this rubbing it in oh Poke myself in the eye. Oh, it's watering. It's watering. <laughs> I'm a mess. Concealed the crap out of my face. <laughs> next is, what's, what's next? I don't even know what's next. Oh, next I go in and I contour. I do my uh, ratchety contouring. So right here, I just have some powder that I got from the Sephora brand makeup collection. And it's just um, a couple shades darker than my natural skin tone. And this is all I do. I get this brush, which is obviously not a contouring brush. I actually don't know what this brush even is used for, but I got it from Eco Tools. You can get them at um, Walgreens. Holy crap, my eye is watering. Oh, and I just go like this. I just make sure I brush it in. When I first got the hang of doing a ratchet contouring, I guess I'm not like rubbing in enough, and it was obvious that I tried to paint on some contour, and I failed epically. I kind of bring it up over here and when I say that I do that I do it whenever I remember it because most of the time I don't yeah so it just helps define the cheekbones one thing I really wanted when I was younger was cheekbones I kept on doing this when I was younger thinking it would help me get cheekbones but then I learned some people's faces don't have intense cheekbones and that's fine where are they not there I don't do some of these makeup steps every single day. Like this is more of a beautified everyday makeup tutorial. So I'm taking some of this NYX blush, which I actually don't use that often. I just don't know where I put my other blush. And I just dab it on, shake it off, and just do it right above the contour. Make sure I rub it in so it's not like I'm, I look too blushy. Uh, when I do videos, I tend to put on a little bit more blush, if I actually remember ever doing brush. blush whatever because then it stands out more I should get some highlighter but I know that I would never use it but anyways next we're moving on to makeup forever um, HD high definition powder this crap saved my life I didn't start using it a lot until recently um, like in the past six months when I noticed wow my face is oily and I don't know how to help change that but when I put this stuff on it's this translucent powder and it helps a lot with um, disguising any oily 
bits of your face. And if you do have oily skin, like seriously, I don't, my face doesn't give me a break. When my face isn't oily, it's dry as heck. And when it's not dry as heck, it's super oily. <laughs> it's not fair. But when it is oily, these oil absorbing sheets are my life from Clean and Clear. They're so helpful, and trust me, they're satisfying when you dab them on your face and a ton of oil comes off. It's like, bye bye see you never, but actually, probably I'll see you a little bit later because <laughs> oil always comes back, running back to my face. Okay, next book is Save the Cat by Blake Snyder. This book I've been recommended so many times because it helps with plotting out a storyline and making sure the structure of your novel is quite sound and makes sense and is in the best shape it can be before you go in and fill in all the words. I have started reading it and it's really great. I highly recommend it. It is for screenwriting, but a lot of authors use this because it helps with any type of storyline that you may be writing. Okay, next I am going to go in with this brush, but it's a brow brush that I put on my eyebrows with. And here is my brow gel. It is Tarte. It is from Tarte. I really love this gel. I've been using it for years. And when I say I've been using it for years, I've literally been using this thing right here for years. It doesn't run out and it's super wonderful and I love it a lot and I and I probably should replace it right now but there's still stuff left. I'm sorry I don't want to spend another you know 20 30 dollars on brow gel when there's still stuff left in here and it still does its job. One day I'm gonna start breaking out in hives because like one of my makeup things is like expired and it's super dangerous and then I'll die. Okay so with my brows I take a little brow brush and I just brush them make them look nice and then I just take a bit of the brow gel my brows are already shaped pretty well for how I like them to be shaped and I'm very, very grateful that I have eyebrows because, you know, I have some friends that don't have any brows and it takes them forever to do their brows. For me, I just like literally just run this brush through. Looks good. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna talk about Nothing Left to Burn by Heather Ezel. Heather is one of my lovely friends and she is a debut author. Her book comes out next month in March. I'm so freaking excited for her. When I first met Heather, we were in Seattle and she came to um, Tasha's and my uh, spontaneous Seattle meetup and she was so sweet. I remember she's like, oh my gosh, I'm an author too. My book's being published by Razorbill next year and I'm like, oh my gosh, we are both like 2018 debuts. I'm super excited and we stayed in contact since then and she is just so wonderful and so sweet. Her book is about a wildfire. Um, in California and it takes place over 24 hours when she gets notified she has to evacuate her home and it has a series of flashbacks that take place over the summer and it's about a romance that she has with a volunteer firefighter and it flashes forward to the current day when she's trying to evacuate the wildfires. It's insane, it's wonderful and I highly recommend everybody go pick it up when it comes out next month because she deserves all the readers ever. Next I'm gonna use my Naked palette because I just got this and it's a Naked Heat palette so it has really pretty colors. I like red on me. I really like just red everything. So this has a really nice selection of like burnt oranges and reds that I love putting on my eyeballs. So I usually take the lightest um, color in this palette and it is called Ounce. It's a weird name. I just like dust it over my eyelid, just like that. Just dust, 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 dust. Make it even more pale than it already is. And then I take Sauced. I just dab, dab, dab. And then I just take it to the corner of my eye and fan it out like that. Because I like my eyes having more of like an angled look to them. Dab, dab, dab. And then I'm gonna take it just a shade darker. I'm gonna go use He Devil in the same type of way on the corner of my eyes. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna talk about the Presentopia Book Club book for the month of February. Yeah, it's February. And that is Ever the Brave by Erin Summerell. I really love this book. I'm currently reading it. It is so phenomenal. I don't wanna spoil you guys about it too much, so I'm just gonna tell you it's a high fantasy. And it brings me back to the days of like old young adult books. And I love it because it, it just like reminds me of so many um, books that I loved when I first got into young adult fiction that it just is, it's just nice. It's cute and I love it and it's super epic. The main character is super enjoyable. I like her a lot. I relate to her and the love interest, he is also amazing. So I know a lot of fantasy nowadays can be like really heavy and really like just dense. And sometimes you just want to take like a little bit of break from that. I definitely recommend reading Ever the Brave, which is the first book in the series and then jumping into Ever... Oh wait, Ever the Hunted is the first book in the series. Ever the Brave is the second one. Um, and just jumping into this world because it's really great and um, I love Erin. Erin is an amazing author and she's also a great bookstagrammer. Definitely go follow her on social media. She has like the best posts. Okay, see, kind of just did that little, little nice little makeup look. And I blend it out with my fingers because I don't know 
how to do this better. Next, I'm going to take this brush and just dab it in the heat double coloring. And I'm just going to slightly go over my bottom eyelid just a little bit. Just so it has some like nice little color right there. Not too much. Like, not like Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen like under eye eyeshadow. But like it's like a nice little tint. Swag. Next, eyeliner. I use the eyeliner that is Stylographic Fine Line Sephora Liquid Liner in Waterproof. I really like this stuff. It like literally stays on for so long. And that's an issue that I have because with like more oily skin, like stuff just slips off of your face. I tend to do like a thin line on the corner of my eye and then I kind of make it larger as I go. I don't know how to explain this, but it's kind of like a cat eye, but it angles my eye. And I'm not gonna do like two series of a cat eye. I don't wanna have to like match it evenly to the other side, like that. I'm gonna do the same with this one. It's really nerve wracking doing this because like you don't wanna mess it up because then you have eyeshadow on and you'll have to take it all off. I ran out of makeup wipes like literally last night. I don't know how I would get it off. I literally should never make a makeup channel ever because I'm like literally the worst person to look for when you need like good helpful advice. Looks even. Sometimes I take just some pencil eyeliner and I just go under the corners of my waterline just there because I think it does stuff even if it doesn't. But I like how it makes it look more like pointy. Next is mascara and I just use the Colossal Big Shot Volume Express Hydrofuge Maybelline New York. Mascara, that was a long name. If you're thinking that I'm going out after I do my makeup, no. I'm staying home, I need to write. But hey, at least I can write while all dolled up. I mean, that's fun. All dolled up and nowhere to go, ever. But I'm with my dog so they can admire my makeup. I sometimes put mascara at the very bottom of my lashes, but I only like do a little bit of it. Um, I tend to put on more mascara when I don't have any, I like, you know, eyeshadow on or eyeliner, just so it has more of an intense look. But my face doesn't look great with like a ton of makeup on. Like I can't do like intensely smoky eyes. Like my face doesn't look good with it. And that's fine because I admire other people's faces when they do really intense makeup looks. Oh, there's a clump. Oh no, the clump's spread. It's spreading. Don't spread. I don't have makeup wipes. Go away. There, it's gone. Be gone. Next, and almost last, because we're almost there, I'm gonna put on some lippy stick. And what I've been loving so far for lipstick has been Rihanna's Fenty line. Like, holy crap. It's amazing. I am going to be using the lipstick that she has from there and it is called Single. And it's this really beautiful, um, kind of like pinky orange color and I just love it so much. Licking my lips, I should probably put on just some, some chappy stick instead of just lipping, licking my stick, lick, licking my lips. Okay, the face is done. Ha! Um, now I'm gonna go in and crimp my hair because yeah. So, fun fact, my hair is extremely short now. Well, not extremely short, it's like a solid medium. But it used to be really long. It used to be like down to my, like below my boob. But I went to get my hair trimmed for a book tour and um, I was like, just cut off the dead ends. And the dead ends were not that bad. They were like probably an inch or two. And you know, that's all she had to cut off. But oh my gosh, she went crazy and cut off like six, seven inches of my hair. This is why you don't go to hairstylists. They just cut off everything. It made me really sad though, because like, you know, I've been wanting to grow my hair out like super, super long. But, you know, at least it's super healthy now without any dead ends. And I'll just get it trimmed more occasionally now, so that doesn't happen again. But I'll go to somebody who I know won't cut off half of my hair. So this crimper is from Hot Shot Tools, and I love it. I need to stop crimping my hair as much, though, because I don't want it to get, like, heat damage. Because I don't really put heat on my hair that often. But, like, recently I've been loving this crimper so much that I've been crimping my hair a lot. But I don't think it's enough to, like, damage it just yet. I love doing my hair with this tool because the it really stays like my hair it's not known for you know looking good like on the second day of the hairstyle it is known for looking like crap but this tool really like makes my hair stay crimpy so i don't have to wash it for like a day or two and if you have my type of textured hair you know that that is significantly long to go without washing your hair because my hair gets so oily super fast and i hate it because it looks gross unless you're snape then you can rock that oily hair Okay, I'm gonna go finish the rest of my hair and I'll be back in a hot second. Okay guys, so my hair is done. It's all did. It's all, it's all, it's all curly. I know that some people with curly hair are like, you never want curly hair, but when you have stick straight hair like I do, you would want some volume. I like curly volume. 
So guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more of these, get ready with me slash talking about books videos. Let me know down below because I really enjoy doing this one. I like changing it up here on this channel, especially in the new year. I think that it's a good time to kind of create new different types of content for book lovers like us. And don't forget, my book Zenith is out now, so definitely go check it out. It's down below if you like female space pirates. I mean, it's pretty cool if I may say so myself. And if you read it and loved it, go give it a review because those are good too. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!